All right, my friends, welcome to episode 306 of Prof and Dev Play Games. My name is Larry, the professor at Prof Plays Games on Twitter, and over there is Anthony, the dev at Summer Speak. How's it going, man? Doing okay. Yeah. Been a generally relaxing weekend, just trying to, to chill out before having to do epic amounts of work again this week. So, you know. Yep, same. <laughs> yeah. This, it's this important one. to take some time to relax. Yep. Uh, and try not to get stressed out on thinking about how much stuff I have to get done in the next, like, five days. Yep. But um, we are on I, parallel I will, tracks. <laughs> yeah, I, I will take the weekend for what it is. Yes. Yeah. Getting, how are you doing? Getting through the month of September would be amazing. I wish I could just snap and have all that work done and be on the other side. Um it's not how it works. I'm doing good, no. surprisingly. Um, I think the music addition in my life is really helping my mental health stay calm and a little less stressed than I would be. But I'm really feeling the effects finally, I think, in a real way of like, we've been doing this for a year and a half as of tomorrow. <laughs> um, and, you know, yeah. finally having to face child care decisions um, uh, yeah. and such. It's all just weighing on me us really yeah definitely you're in a a bit of a different position than than i am in my family so yeah um but i mean we there's still that constant thing of being like okay trying to balance the kids like interactions with other kids and how Mm -hmm. much yep the whole thing and it's just not as simple as like yeah just go play with your friends it's cool um, well, that's how, I mean, we're finally at the point where we're like, okay, we can't keep her away from kids anymore. Um, we can find the most controlled, safe fish situation, and then she can do that. Um, but, you know, like, we've got neighbor kids who are, you know, unvaxxed family and just kind of, like, hanging out with tons of families, and we're like, not not on your life. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Yeah, no, we're, we've been trying to figure, navigate that as well, because, yeah, that's the... It is a challenge right now with part of the population vaccinated, and then my kids just can't be. Yep. And so if you're in that situation where you're like, well, most everyone I know is vaccinated, but my kids aren't, you're still stuck in the same position. That's really that's the discussion we've been having because some of our friends who are child free are like they're going to concerts, they're yep. you know doing all this stuff, which is cool, like live your life. But we are also vaccinated but because we have an unvaccinated kid we're like we're still locked down yeah completely you know we're like opening the door a little bit to our daughter to do um four hours of child care three days a week and a very controlled environment with masks uh for the most part and outside half that time anyways and like it's yeah, as controlled I mean, as we can get it yeah i mean we're still doing the same thing we're homeschooling um kids wanted to stick with that actually themselves but we're using a program in where our school is that it's not it's more complicated than we're just homeschooling we're part of an alternative school um Mm, okay but the kids now have can have in-person enrichment classes and they did that for the first time last week so my daughter had uh art and a history class with other kids how, how would that feel for you guys? Um, uh, it was. It's a little weird. I mean, they have to wear masks the entire time while they're there. Yeah. Um, they if they have lunch, if they bring lunch, they have they eat outside. Everyone yeah. gathers outside for pick up and drop off. It's yeah. so. I mean, again, they're doing the most that they can. These teachers are all vaccinated. They they want to be as protected as they can with with the kids. Um. But I feel like there's a balance there because my kids love it. They really enjoyed being in these enrichment classes around other kids their age, yep. talking and already starting to make uh, social connections from it. Um, my son is taking a circuitry and logic class, oh, actually. Cool. Yeah, I'm like, that's a really cool thing to learn. Um, and, of course, he met a kid there, like, the first day, and he's like, who, like likes the same video games he likes and just has a lot of the same interest shocking for a logic and circuitry <laughs> i was gonna uh, say that but i didn't I know, want to I'm like, <laughs> he's like man we have so much in common i'm like well he's kind of self-selected <laughs> by taking this class yeah, so exactly but uh 
it, <laughs> and it's like, fine, like we have, we're like, we'll allow this level of risk because this is clearly good for your mental health. Um, yeah, that's where we're at too. We're like, we've got, we've done so much fucking work and pissed off so many people with my questions um, about invasive questions about COVID um, protocols and safety and whatever else. Um, we finally found one, but there's still a little bit of risk because there's one thing that yep. is not good, but the rest is really good. And it's like, fuck, like we're never going to find a thing that's a hundred percent good. Yeah. It's a balance. And yeah, that's what we try. But yeah, I hear you on the part that it, it, a year and a half later, yeah, it takes a toll, I'll be honest. And it takes a toll in the same way that I see a lot of people going back and living their lives in the can. They're vaccinated and they're just doing yep. their thing. And I'm like, I can't yet. Yep, exactly. I, I, I can't wait until I can. Like, I I want my kids all vaccinated so we can just kind of go do some stuff that we really want to do. Um, but Well, and, you know. Soon. Hopefully when, soon. Yeah, they said like mid November, but who the fuck knows the F- FDA? But even then, like, yeah. that that doesn't get my kid. You know, that's great for everyone else, which it's awesome. We need it for what our is country. It six, six it's and up at that five, point. Five and up. Five and up. Okay. Yeah. Which, so yeah, it hits both of my kids. Yes, and you know it's fine, whatever, because that's great. More kids being vaccinated, cool. Also, that means there'll be a vaccine for kindergarten. So yes. that's the main thing for me. <laughs> I need yeah. it for her before kindergarten. So. so it's going to be fun to go back and listen to these podcasts one day during this pandemic time and be like, wow, that's like a time capsule. <laughs> these, it is. These intro conversations. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, but it is a video game podcast. And this week we are following up on the PlayStation Showcase, which actually happened. And I thought it was a banger. <laughs> I thought it had a lot of good stuff. I think, it, I think it had a lot of good stuff. It had some misses for me as yeah. well. Yeah. But, Not a big Star Wars fan. But I think fan. overall it was... <laughs> Uh, pretty good. I was pretty pretty excited by the stuff that they that was shown. We got some stuff right in our predictions, and yeah, there was yeah, stuff baby. shown that I had no clue about. Like right. I would have never predicted that. So when they did that right from the start. Yeah, Knights of the Old Republic remake. Like it's in the name, yeah. remake by Aspire, who has done some console ports, I think, for Sony. Maybe? Aspire has has basically outside of Bioware, probably has the most knowledge of that code base. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. They've, they've brought Knights of the Old Republic to, like, every platform outside of its original launch platform. Oh, damn. All right, so they're the ones that should be doing this. <laughs> yeah, they, they've done every port. Uh, I mean, and it's true that they've only dealt with ports before, and I think they gave they gave an interview in, like, the post segment, because there's, there's the showcase, and then there was, like, an interview a thing that happened afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, who was it? It was Ryan Treadwell from Aspire, who looks, who was like the lead producer of this, was talking about um, how this is like the biggest thing that that company has done, taken on. Right. Um, and they've ramped up, and but they feel like they have the knowledge of the game and what it is, and they feel like they can execute on remaking it. Um, I don't think it's going to be a departure like the Final Fantasy VII remake in that way. Like, mm-hmm. I think it sounds like the interview, they're like, no, we're going to stick with the story that's there. That's what people really love about this. Right. So, um, I'm curious. Uh, it's definitely one of those games where I'm like, I'll play through the remake and it'll be great. But it's a game I want to, I would love to expunge from my mind so I could <laughs> experience for the first time again. Yeah. Um, because there's a big twist in that game, which is incredible. Um, that's but the... it's ruined for me because I've already experienced it. Right. Well, that's the thing that I'm excited about because I want, to, I would love to be able to do that for Mass Effect, and I can't, obviously. Um, yeah. But this is kind of like the next best thing, really. I, cause I've never played this game. I don't know what the twist is. I don't know anything about it other than you're a Jedi and you can choose the light or the dark or whatever the fuck it's yeah. called. Yep. So... Uh, completely unexpected, though. I was not... This was not on my radar at all that someone would even be remaking this game or even remastering it. So. There was there was a kind of funny games podcast back in July or June where... um, oh, What's his name? Blanking on his name. 
Khan. Khan. So that's fuck. I'm blanking oh. on his, other than Khan. I'm blanking on his name. D- Imran Khan. There we go. Imran Khan. Okay. He said that uh, this is in the works and Aspire is working on it. And okay. They were, like, they were like, okay. <laughs> and then this came out. I was like, holy shit, he was right. Damn. He was right. Literally, I'm excited. It's... He had new people <laughs> working I, on it. Do you do you think that this means at some point we're gonna get a remake of Dragon Age? No. No. Okay. Well, this is the the thing. I mean, notice how this had like Bioware nowhere on it. Yes, I did notice that. <laughs> uh, because I don't think Bioware even owns the. They don't own the rights to this. Even though they made the uh, code, they don't own this. No. Um, who? Because it was originally published only on the 360. Right, which is weird. So Microsoft Microsoft was the publisher originally, or the platform publisher. I mean, Lucas Games was involved somehow. It's like Bioware owned none of the IP at this point, um, nor there's a good chance that they don't actually own much of any of it anymore in that way. So I'm glad you brought that up because I was wondering, did they not put Bioware on here because of like the name being tarnished a bit? But no, no, I just okay. I think there's just a legal thing going, legal thing there because that with Bioware now being owned by EA and I'm pretty sure this game didn't come through come with them when they got bought by EA. Back well, in the and then EA's losing the you know exclusive Star Wars license anyways, so yeah. Uh, well, and this isn't even coming to a Microsoft. Uh, I mean, it's coming to PC, but it's it's PS5 console exclusive, it seems like. Yep, seems like. Um, so, yeah, I think... Oh, it says just... timed, sorry. That means... Yeah, it... yeah I'm sure it's time. everything's timed. Yeah, but, right. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's some weird legal things going on who actually owned the copyrights and trademarks and all everything, but... I don't think it's Bioware anymore. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, which would make sense, and also in the way that uh, that there's probably other old D and D games is the same way. The publisher yeah. owned them. Owned right. them. Do you? Does this stand out to you as like the biggest thing from the showcase? No, oh, because it was just a little teaser. So I'm yeah. excited for it, but mm-hmm. that's not enough for me to be like, yeah, that's the best thing from the showcase. Uh, but at least with at least with this one as opposed to the the teaser later that we'll talk about, like there's already a game that you can kind of extrapolate sure. like what this might be. Yeah. So I mean it's exciting, but yeah. and it's also no date. Like I expect uh, this that's true, that's true. probably two or three years out at yeah. minimum. Twenty twenty four. Yeah. <laughs> minimum. Um, uh, after this game was I thought fucking Bayonetta three for a second. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow, that's a lot of ass all the time. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that's yeah. the only thing that went through my mind constantly. Yep. I was like, wow. That I, is, I was uh... thinking naively. I'm like, did, did they did they realize that they're just showing her ass? Are they doing this on purpose? I'm like, oh, no, they're doing <laughs> By, like, the fifth time, I was like, oh, okay, it's on purpose. I was yep. giving them a benefit of the doubt. <laughs> no, no, it was pretty obvious. It was like, cool, there's the camera shots are chosen for a reason. Um, yeah. Project Eve, I think is what it's called. Yeah, I never heard. It. I mean, it's pretty. Um, I don't know if it's something that I'm was super wowed by though. Overall, no. Um, I'm, but yeah, really ban- type of game. It, it's ban- Banetta, um, yeah. Devil May Cry ish yep. type action game. Um, Is which the Parasite Eve at all? No. Oh damn. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I don't. I could get into that whole thing. Of so, let's do this uh, because it's really fun uh so parasite eve the ps1 game is actually a sequel to a novel oh there's a novel called parasite eve um Mm. that actually spawned a whole there's a a japanese movie that's based on the novel um and then there's parasite eve the video game which is a sequel to that novel and then all the extra parasite eve games that came out some never came out in the u.s i think um just tell their own story yeah. so it's interesting because i've watched the japanese movie uh back in college because i was curious um and yeah it, the i would say it's a very disconnected sequel that game is and 
it's probably why we'll never see a, a remake or an, a re-release of it is because it's a licensed property and I'm oh. sure that license has lapsed at this point so they yeah. can't really do anything with it right um which is unfortunate because I enjoyed Parasite Eve quite a bit. Yeah, when they keep talking about PS1 remakes, that comes up every once in a while. And it's just not a game I know anything about. So. Yeah, I think that's it's just because of its weird licensing thing with Square, where it's not something they created on from them for themselves. That is why we just never see it at this point. Um, it's too bad. There's some there's some old PS1 games that I'd love Square to bring back, but probably won't happen. Nope, not related to this. Project Eve is its own... Huh, okay. I don't know what country... Korean? I thought it was Korea, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, the next thing was we finally saw gameplay of Tina, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands for <laughs> Borderlands. The D&D with guns. <laughs> D&D <laughs> with guns. Um, I mean, this isn't a game I'm going to pick up right off the bat, but I'll probably play it eventually to be honest, and the trailer was hilarious because, talking about Japanese stuff, Japanese music, it was baby metal as the trailer, which is um, a Japanese, like, metal band thing. I've heard of them, I think from you. Yeah, um, so, but, because it's a really funny thing, it's two very, like, cute, kawaii Japanese girls singing, um, to like interspersed with like just full on metal <laughs> uh, at times, and it's hilarious. It's this like the dichotomy between the two is just insane. Um, it's like chess boxing, remember... that phenomenon. Now that you ever saw that, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think because it's a, there's an American metal guy who went there and kind of helped form this band um i just can't remember who it was it was i thought it was someone pretty famous from uh u.s yeah i can't figure it out right now but it was they have just a really weird history and it was just funny because i'm like i can't believe they're using the song <laughs> in this trailer that's but awesome it, um, it, yeah. it looks fun I think that yeah. if, if it has great reviews I think I'll probably check it out um, yeah. I like the I like the fantasy D&D aspect to this whole thing because Borderlands is just not really for me I don't think it's funny like at all um, I don't know if I've not, maybe I haven't played enough but it just doesn't strike me as funny um, but this one looks promising for me humor wise yeah, uh, yeah. Like I said, I, I probably won't get it when it first comes out. It's also Q, like Q one of next year, like everything. And oh god, twenty twenty two is gonna be a fucking uh, twenty seventeen all over again. Yeah, and I'm just like, awesome. I, I can't buy all these games because they come out with like weeks of each other. Right. So this is a game that's like, cool, this will be fun, but there's other things coming out within weeks of you of this yep. game that are more important to me. Um. We saw Forspoken again, which we did predict. Um, I think I predicted that we'd see this. Yeah. We haven't seen this much of the story before, though, right? No, we haven't. This is yeah. this drop in the story piece of it. and That was pretty cool, yeah. I thought. Yeah, it, it looks cool. I'm I'm in for this. This could be a lot of fun. Again, out spring 2022, so who knows if this is going to be around other things I want to play. But um, it looks really pretty. Uh neat open world like the general like uh, woman taken to another land kind of thing uh, yeah and I never like stories, stories like that I find those uh, fucking annoying um, but this one struck me as interesting for some reason I just don't like yeah. I, I like them once you get past the part where it's like whoa what the fuck is happening uh, explain use it as a device to explain all the magic or whatever in this world like yeah. Fucking like I love Stephen King and I love the Dark Tower, but Book Two, the drawing of the three, you, you draw one, th each of the three characters through the the portal to Roland and explain how the shit works three times, and it's just like I fucking hate this book. Um, just that part of the story is annoying as shit to me. You have to and, do it right. I've seen enough fish out of water stuff because it's ex 
especially popular popular in like sci-fi right sci-fi and uh anime and manga as well oh Uh, yeah a lot of it as well and they can do it really well because a lot of times again you learn you don't need to exposition dump when they do it like just go like yeah they're a fish out of water and they'll learn as you like you'll learn as the character learns as they move along in this world um and those are that's when it's done well and i'm hoping this game does that part well um, but the author really wants to show you their lore Bible. <laughs> no, I don't care about your dumb lore Bible. <laughs> if I do, just publish the lore Bible, and I'll pick that up, and I'll read it, if I care. Put it in a codex. Um, I'll read it if yeah. I want to. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, this looks cool. You get talking bracelets that uh, sound somewhat sounded like uh, um, Paul uh, Bettany, <laughs> actually, to me. Oh, interesting. I didn't pick that up. I don't think it is, but it sounds somewhat like uh, Vision and Jarvis from the Marvel stuff. Uh, yeah. Which I'm sure they were trying to get something similar to that. Um, right, because it's kind of the same idea, some sort of yeah. something talking to you. Yes. But yeah, it looks um, cool. And it's yeah, it looks cooler cool than I thought it was going to be. I right, think. Spring 22. Just, yeah. It, it looks neat. Like, the visual effects, like the... um. On this, the the trailer for it that I'm looking at right now is like that frozen shards of yeah. whatever like shoot from her hands and shit. That looks pretty cool. Yeah. Um, the next one is uh, Rainbow Six Extraction, which I'm going to skip unless you have something to say uh, about that. Nope. Next. All right. Next was an Alan Wake remaster. Remaster. It's all right. People like that game. I don't know. I've never played Alan Wake. Um, I have neither. Horror, horror game, and I'm like, nope. Um, yep. Although there's a piece to it, and I'm like, it's cool to think like it's a story about a writer who doesn't really like i wouldn't say it's a game about like resident evil style horror where you have like your gun and you're shooting all the stuff it's like no you're a writer with a light for the most of it and you're trying to to like piece together a mystery uh, um yeah and i've always heard good things about it people have liked it quite a bit um I've heard good things about it, and I've purchased it, or I've gotten somehow I have like copies on like Xbox and PC, and I'm like oh, I should probably play this. And I saw this trailer. I've never looked into it, and I was like, oh, it's horror? No, I'm not. Yeah, no, it's no, no thanks. Um, not interested. It is Remedy though, and I know that there was a Control DLC that tied Alan Wake into that same universe. Yeah, there was the the chalkboard thing where they had to explain how shit worked, and yeah. it was by the main character Alan Wake. Yeah. Guess. Yeah. Cuz there's like control AWE. Oh yeah, right. That's Expans- the second expansion yeah. to AWE Alan Wake. Um yeah, and that's the crossover between Alan Wake and Control. So it puts them as part of the same universe. Um Yeah, that's cool. So Did I'm, you finish Control, by the way? No. I need to play yeah. more of it. Yeah. Um I get distracted. From what I've played, it's still an incredible game. Um, yeah. Combat's really fun in that one. Um, but yeah. So that ma- makes me a little bit more interested to play Alan Wake to suffer through my dislike of horror games, but <laughs> probably not. Yeah. Uh, we can skip um, the next one. I don't give a damn. Yeah, they delayed Grand Theft Auto to March 2022. Sure. So another Juggernaut in 2022, whatever. Um, Ghostwire Tokyo, did that do anything for you? Uh, more horror. It's kind of cool looking. Um, yeah, that weird... it does have a good visual style. Yeah, it has great visual style. It, the... it reminds me of... Back in the day, there was some FPSs, like, I think it was Hexen, which was, like, you don't run around in FPS and shoot things. You, like, use magic and spells. Um, and so it kind of has a similar vibe to that, but I know that it's made that uh, Ghostwire Tokyo, I mean, it's a full-on horror game. Uh, creepy horror, Japanese horror. Yeah. Uh, but it's probably going to be too creepy for me. Yep. But, uh, That's my verdict. <laughs> I think this is still Bethesda, right? Yeah. It was Tango Gameworks, which Tango are... Tango Gameworks, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Microsoft-owned game. I'm in yep. the right. PlayStation still. Yep, yep that was um, one of the deals they had signed. Yep. Um, next one is Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, it was a story trailer. It yeah. 
fine. Yep. Um, again, it's the Eidos Montreal's thing with and Square's take on the like Marvel stuff. It's very much like, hey, it's kind of the movie stuff, but not, and it's really disconcerting. Like looking at it, I just I uh, feel like the the Square choices for the Marvel stuff is just all wrong. <laughs> Yeah, which is different than, like, the Firaxis thing when they showed Midnight Suns, which is like, oh, no, this doesn't look anything like the movies. Like, yeah. this is very much based on the comics or their own take on these characters, and it's funny how easy it is. I'm like, yeah, cool, I accept that. But as soon as you make it look anything like the Marvel movies, I'm like, no, but that's not the Marvel movies. So right. <laughs> can we not? It's not, like, the look, but also, like, just the way that they talk to each other and stuff. Yeah. And it's, like, it's, you're just trying to be, like, the movie. I, I don't know. Like, Insomnia, like, compared to Insomniac, who's doing Marvel stuff, too, with yep. characters from movies, and I don't get that vibe at all. No, but it's the thing. They're using characters from movies. And the, the movies moves, just use the characters from the comics, but they're, they're, I feel like, yeah, we'll get to it. Insomniac stuff is also just, it's through their own voice and yep. everything. Like, they're right. not... They're not trying to mimic the movies. They're like, which the Square stuff definitely feels like. They're like, well, the movies are popular, so let's try to align ourselves with those more. And I'm like, well, exactly. the names and the IP is popular. You could just do what you need want to do with it. You don't yep. need it to be like the movies. Yeah, um, that was the thing. Is like playing it way too safe. And it's just, yeah. I, this just feels like more of the same of that. I hope I'm wrong, because I like this property, yeah. but... I don't know. It's supposed to come out next month, I think. Uh, yeah, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's October 16th or something wow. like that. Wow, okay. That's way sooner than I thought. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm curious about it because it's a tactics game. Um, wait, wait, what? Isn't it? Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy? Wasn't that one more of a tactics game? Oh, wait a second. It is story as a choice-driven game. Is it fucking tactics? Did I miss that? Guardians of the Galaxy... Um, I thought it was. Well, I thought it was a third-person shooter. It could be. Um, I could have been getting it. I mean, I'm looking at the gameplay uh, right now. But, this no, yeah, it's a third not person. It's a third person because it was. I think the there's the Firaxis one, which is tactics. But I remember yeah. there was a story that conflated the two together that I read. Like, oh, okay. There was rumors of like this tactics thing and a Guardians of the Galaxy, and people were like, "Oh, it's going to be the Guardians of the Galaxy or the tactics game." Um, right. And then it was shown that no, that's not what's happening. There's actually right. many Marvel games being made right now. Um. So yes, no, it's a third person action thing. Um. Yeah, I, that's that's even harder. Um. For them I mean, to do, considering how good Spider Man is. October 26th. Um, yeah. yeah, no, absolutely right. But I'm looking at the just the box art, and it's like, that's the movie characters. <laughs> yeah, but not. Wow. not. But not, but they went way too close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, next was Masquerade Vamp Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt, which is a fucking battle royale. What? Yeah, it's a vampire battle royale. Um, okay, okay. Honestly, I have no clue if it's going to be good or not, but uh, it's free I'm going to make a guess since so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll probably try it just from the fact that it's vampire. I'll be like, well, I can do a couple games and see how I feel about it. But I don't. I'm shocked that this e even exists. Like, I don't know how you pitch this thing and go like, yeah, we're gonna do a battle royale, but it's gonna be vampires. <laughs> but um, there's our different spin on it. People love battle royales. People love vampires. What's not to like? Uh. That. Yeah. Uh, um. Deathloop was shown yet again. again. Yeah. <laughs> How many times? Like, it's out in like a week, two weeks. So. No, in like two days. It comes out oh, on the 14th. 14th, holy crap. <laughs> yeah. It's this week. Okay. Um, I guess we know it's coming. We're good. Uh, yeah. Looks um, looks fine. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it. Looks fine. Um, I don't think it's... I don't know. It's very Dishonored-like in a lot of ways, but I also don't... There's part of me that actually feels like they, there's a little bit um, oversaturation with the game. Oh, just yeah, that's not... Constantly, that's not and I'm like, I think yeah. you, could just, you could have been a little bit less is more on this yep. game. 
Yep. Um, Way too much talking about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next was a Radiohead and Epic are doing a game. <laughs> Based on one of their fucking Al- Radiohead albums, I guess? Yeah, I think so. So someone at Epic Games who has a shit ton of money is like, I fucking love Radiohead. We ought to do something with them. <laughs> we're making, we're making, and it, <laughs> it's in a virtual exhibition, so who knows? Like, Actually, this very much could be the extension of like where Epic has now done like three or four concerts within Fortnite. Yeah. Of different like this could be just a spin out of that as well of being like, well we're gonna do this exhibition which is Radiohead doing this like virtual concert experience. No, um, that would be fucking cool. And that's which not is, what they said at all. Yeah. <laughs> so, that would, people have been like, Yeah, that's awesome. People left this thinking, what the fuck? Yeah. And it could be. I don't know. But they call it an exhibition, so that's different than a game necessarily. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, supposedly in November and tw- November 2021, so not too long to figure out what this is actually going to be. Yeah. Uh, uh, the next game on the list is very weirdly enough the game of the showcase for me. <laughs> really. And I have now fully transformed into a gamer who is excited about games for my daughter. <laughs> oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. This is Ch- Chia? T-C-H-I-A? I don't know. It says a game inspired by New Caledonia, which I don't know what that is. Um, but it's like this adventure game with these two young girls who can basically look at whatever, an animal or whatever, and kind of transform into it and kind of traverse the landscape and solving puzzles. And it fucking looks like Wind Waker. Uh, not in art style so much, but, like, kind of feel a little bit. Um, and then, like, some of them look like Beetle. <laughs> and then they're flying around with a fucking leaf as a parasail. Uh, paraglider, I mean. Um, uh, but it uh, seems a little yeah. more battle than them. Um... Yeah. It seems so... like um, Concrete Genie kind of uh, battling, almost. Yeah. Uh, so New uh, Caledonia is an actual place in the world. Oh. It's an island, kind of like no, slightly, it's off the eastern coast and a little bit north of Australia. Um, oh, okay, cool. Was a French colony, I All believe. Right. Um, and that's I thought it was the, like a book that's or where the property or something. From. That's where the developers are from. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, and this game is inspired is like their culture and everything is what awesome. inspired them. So, uh, it's a game you could play and learn about uh, New Caledonia. Um, well, I am very excited because my daughter is going to fucking love it. <laughs> um, and, and I will too. I think, I, I don't know how the gameplay is going to be. There's some hints that it might not be as exciting as I think, but um, I'm, I'm ready to try it out. Yeah. No, it looked interesting. And it was cool to see that um, a small game like this get featured. Yeah. Showcase, and especially from when you look at, like, hey, here's a developer from a pretty small little island country um well it's a kind of a cool place to put it because everything else that comes after is just like okay now it's sony studios yeah now um, like okay there's all the third part now we're just going let's let's now we're like ramping it up yep. dude <laughs> so we called this one um my dog is doing uh uncharted 4 uh they called a remake remaster remaster um but it's uncharted 4 and lost legacy together for PS5, um, which I'm, I'm excited. These games rock, but yeah. that means they're not going to have any sort of like, here's your free 60 FPS update. <laughs> no, no, it's this if you yep. want it. Um, I will, again, uh, early, out early 2022. So I enjoy these games. I've played them. It's great. I'm not going to buy this right now. Um, at that time. Yeah. Right. I don't know but what I, this would come out as. Is it like a forty dollar bundle? No, is it gonna be sixty probably? probably seventy, 60. I mean. Sixty or seventy, I don't know what they'll go with here. Um I mean, how much is Lost Legacy right now, even? I don't know. I'm gonna say twenty. I'm gonna say thirty. much is it on the PS Store right now? Oh, the audience I'm logged, is in suspense. I'm logged in, so it won't show me. Oh, because you own it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you already own it. Why are you... 
Oh uh, no, it's twenty. It's on sale right now for ten. Yeah, baby. Oh, it's on sale for ten. Aha. Uh-huh. Ten right now. Yeah, uh, baby. I could see them trying to do. S- I want to say it should be sixty, fifty, or sixty, but it's probably gonna be sixty or seventy. Yeah. I'm excited. More people will check it out, maybe or whatever. But um, yeah, that's a lot. Um, yeah. But I said Uncharted, so I win. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Uh, Wee! I did not predict the next one though. No. Uh, when they showed the Marvel logo, I was like, okay, here, here it is, Insomniac. They're gonna show us Spider-Man. Um, <laughs> and as soon as they showed kind of the bar. And, like, went in there, and it was, like, wrecked bar, and then the dude with just... They're not showing the face, but it was just, like, hands showing on the table. Knuckles. <laughs> knuckles. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, my God, it's Wolverine. Yep. Yep. It had... They, like, nailed the vibe even before you really got a sense of the... the Because Marvel plus this wrecked bar, you're just like, this is Wolverine. Yeah. And then, the you know, the cowboy hat and the checkered shirt or yeah. whatever, and then you just look at the knuckles with the fucking slices. You're like, oh, my God. And then I had a couple of thoughts. But the one that kind of encapsulate all the thoughts that I had was, how many AAA games will Insomniac put out between A Dance with Dragons and A Dream of Spring? Because <laughs> it's a fucking lot. It includes, yeah. you know, uh, fucking uh, Sunset Overdrive is on that list, um, which came out a long time ago. It did. Uh, I think Sony picking up Insomniac was a great thing for them. Holy shit. They're just like, okay, you need a Marvel game? Well, we have these guys who are fucking incredible. Yeah. This this Does this come out before Spider-Man 2? No. Or after? I think this, this is after. Okay. I'm almost certain. Because they showed nothing of this game. Yeah, right. Um, and I think in the post-interview, there was stuff about it saying that this was later than Spider-Man 2, which we'll get to. <laughs> Because, of yeah. course, they do this, and they don't go right to Spider-Man 2. They right. go to Gran Turismo 7, which is one of the most drop-dead gorgeous games I've ever seen. Yeah, like, yeah. are these just photorealistic cars at this point? Because that's what it looked like most of the time. It was like, wow, cool, these cars are real. Um, and it and seems I'm going like to there's... fucking play the shit out of this game. <laughs> It looks amazing, and it feels like they've put... I know it's, the, you know, tracks and stuff and those kind of yeah. races as opposed to Horizon, yeah. but it does feel like there's a little bit of, like, I don't know, the festiveness of Horizon. Um, a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, Gran Turismo has always... Uh, I mean, well, Forza even has their, I would say, the non-Horizon Forza games Yeah, are very much in line with Gran Turismo. It's only the Horizon... Right ones which they are like let's make it a little bit more playful and everything and uh that's not gran turismo gran turismo is an issue with real driving simulation um and for some reason i am here for it and i've Mm -hmm. always been here for it um when they dated it march 4th or something yeah um 2022 20 everything fucking 2022 except for the next game (laughs) yeah um (laughs) <laughs> which was the return to Insomniac. And everyone's like, oh yeah, there's Spider-Man 2. There it was. There we go. Um, which, as far as I can tell, it's gonna... I mean, if they show both Peter Parker and Miles Morales there yep. in it, it's co-op, right? It's gotta, it's gotta be. be. Oh, it's gotta right? be. They're not gonna switch back. And... It's gotta be. <laughs> this is... Oh, I hope it would be amazing. And it would be it would be awesome. The narration for the beginning through most of it sounds like uh, Craven the Hunter. Craven the Hunter. It's, yeah, it's a Spider-Man villain. Um, oh, okay. And Sony has been working on making a movie of it as well. Um, mm-hmm. A spinoff. So, and then it shows Venom at the end. So I yep. have a feeling that it's going to be Craven and Venom are going to be something going on there. Um, yeah, I love the Venom at the end. Yeah, and it's a good-looking Venom, I will say. Looks yeah. better than the movie Venom. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like, <clears throat> Insomniac does their own thing, and it looks better than the movie. And then yep. the Square Square Studios try to do their own thing, and it looks way worse than the movie. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited for that. And But we do have to wait until 2023 for this. At least. I think that puts Wolverine in, like, 2024. Yeah. I think, like... But it also makes me wonder if they're going to be tied together at all. 
Like here. Is Insomniac building their own little universe? <laughs> they surely, because wasn't there wasn't there like an Avengers Tower in Spider Man? I think so. I'm pretty sure there was. I, I think there was because like an achievement for going there. I think. Yeah. Um. So. The, so like us. <laughs> why not? Like if that's your like you make Ratchet and Clank and you make Marvel games. How's that? Like great. There you We're go. Set for twenty years. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, like, they, okay, you do Wolverine. Are, are they going to do an X Men game? Are <sighs> they are they moving towards X Men? Is like, oh my god. I mean, you're doing Wolverine. That's the next. The next extrapolation after Wolverine is well, X Men, whole thing, like. I mean, you'll know if in Wolverine, there are yeah. some of the X Men, you know. There have to has to be. I mean, it would. That's the thing. Doing a Wolverine game that doesn't touch on some of the X Men, yeah, would be really weird. Overall, did, did did Logan? I can't remember. Did it have any allusions to the rest of the X Men? Yeah, I mean, it had Xavier. Or did, okay, I I can't remember. I mean, that's the whole thing of uh, the movie. It had Patrick Stewart still as Xavier in it. Um, okay. God, that was a good movie. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it was still theoretically part of that X-Men movie timeline. Uh, yeah. Just far in the future. Right. Um, so. Hugh, Hugh Jackman's like, spoilers, I guess. Yeah. Kill the character. <laughs> Bury him. Yeah. Yep. It's time to move on. Um, yep. Done. Which is based on a comic series. Old Man Logan um, was the comic story that that was all based on. So. But yeah. Um, we got Spider Man and then we got Ragnarok. It keeps getting better. I thought Ragnarok was fucking awesome. Um, I think it's, you know, obviously there's a ton of gameplay. Um, but there's just. It sh- very clearly showed you got a lot of the same moves, and now here's some new shit. <laughs> yeah. You know? um, uh, it's like God of War Plus. It looks yeah. fucking great. Um, the, new voice actor for the kid. Yeah, because it's slightly older. Yep. Um, and <laughs> standing up to Kratos now. like. Yeah. Uh, being that like defiant middle schooler, I guess. Um, when you got Freya right in the beginning, I think it's Freya. Yeah. It's um, I think so. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I think it looks great. Um, still watching, I'm like, oh god, just watching this game makes me exhausted. Um, but you must start with because this like continues on pretty much immediately from the last one. You must start with like Mimir and the, your powers, right? Like. Did they mysteriously disappear again? Hard to, to say. Like level uh, up. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the what they'll do with that. There's a good thing. I mean, it might shift to being like, well, you need to do use different powers now, something yeah. like that. Like. Right. I don't know. I, I would hope that they figure out the best way to move forward with that. Um. I'm sure they they know it. Yeah. I'm sure. But that was a good. And, one. Everyone wanted to see this game. So yes, absolutely. there we go. Everyone got to see this game, but they did not give it a date. I know they showed so much of it. Like it seems very cohesive in terms of like the story they're telling and the, how it looks that I feel like it really is going to be 2022, 2022. Yeah. Um, when was the last one? Was it 18? 2018? Uh, I believe so. Oh yeah. It was got a war 2018. Yeah. Um, no, there's a lot of the same moves with the axe and shit. Um, yeah. Although, now some of it's imbued with lightning, I think. Oh, there's a fucking... Man, it just looks good. I didn't, play far en- I didn't play far enough into the into God of War 2018. Do you get your daggers back eventually? Oh, yeah. Okay. The, chain the, the, the Chains of Chaos? Yeah. Yeah, you do. How far in did, does that happen? Probably halfway, a little yeah, over halfway. I didn't make it there, so yeah. Because then you get a you get a whole another um, you know, tree to level up with those yeah. chains. Um, yeah, those things. It's it's a pretty cool reveal. That game, fuck man. I remember the first time when we both tried to play it together. Yeah. You know, we both bounced off like this is way too intense for us, and then, yes. You eventually were able to get into it. 
oh my god it got way into it it was it was during the pandemic though it was the beginning yeah. of 2020 um i was like well all right i guess i'm doing this and i nearly platinum the only thing i had to do is go find a bunch of shit which i never like i did the hard shit i beat all the fucking valkyries <laughs> um but finding the stupid ravens like ugh, fuck who has time for this shit yeah um <sighs> But the Ragnarok trailer ends with, like, two characters. Like, a giant guy. Tyr, maybe? Um, and then, like, a, a a girl or a woman yeah. at the end. But they did say that this is the last Norse-based God of War. So uh, it's not a trilogy? No. Oh, a duology. For this, for this storyline, Ragnarok is the end of the Norse stuff. But then it was very much said not said that there's something more but it's not cool Norse. but i'm curious cool. what that is i'm like well you've killed the greek gods already <laughs> and now you're killing all the norse gods um, next we we kill <laughs> jesus <laughs> i don't know next we're going to nazareth <laughs> i'm like what the hell um are we going to like uh eastern religions i don't know we're going to go to, like, uh, Japanese or Chinese mythology. Not unless they change their whole team that's working on it. That feels yeah. a bit appropriative. Um, I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Or do they go back to Greece? I don't know. Oh, jeez. Uh, I'm excited. This this looks fuck. I mean, yeah, I'm. This this is great. But, again, 2022. 2022, just take the whole year off, apparently. Um. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Most of the stuff is packed that we know about is packed and will tell from January to end of March. There's a lot of games coming in those three months. Yep. Maybe and that. I assume a lot of these are actually a number of them are going to slip, which will probably be good. Um, well, Horizon's dated for February something or other. Yeah. Yep. Um, so. I mean, that's the thing. Sony has, uh... It's in, uh, Forbidden West. What date is it? February 22nd? February 18th. So there's... Two... Like, two and a half weeks between that and Gran Turismo 7. So Sony's putting out two of their big hitters within two and a half weeks of each other. And I know probably there's not a huge overlap of audience, but it's also just Sony first-party games coming out so close to each other. It's kind of crazy. Did you touch your mic? No. Sorry. My wife just sent me a text that has completely staggered me. <laughs> oh, no. Um, and I'm trying to compose myself. And not break my computer. <laughs> uh, Childcare is fun. We, we will talk about this when we're done with the podcast. Yeah, we sure will. I'm very sorry. I go, have was completely gone for the last 30 seconds. <laughs> I'm sure you made really cool points about something. Um, two games coming out nearly at the same time. I remember yep. that. And then I blacked out. <laughs> for Ben West and the GT7 are two and a half weeks between them. Ha. Huh. Interesting. First, first party Sony deciding to put them out right then and there. Yeah, it kind of smacks of um, what was it? Fucking. Was it Titanfall two? Titanfall two. Yeah. yeah. EA did that with Titanfall two and Battlefield. We were like yeah. two weeks apart. Stupid. <laughs> A little bit. Um, like I said, I don't think the games have probably the biggest overlap of audience, so that's safer, as opposed to that. Uh titanfall battlefield situation where they're both fps's <laughs> yeah so i don't know um but overall i the showcase was pretty great so uh i was happy with it yeah i was um got, you know start off big and then there was some cool stuff in the middle but then at the end it was just like oh now here's the real showcase that was a warm-up yeah. <laughs> Because you're watching the whole thing, you're like, where's all the Sony stuff? This is all third part. Oh, here it is. Let's just 
they just saved it for the end. Um, so yeah, uh, that's exciting. I'm okay with it. Yeah, and it's really cool. The beginning of next year is going to be a little insane on picking which games I'm actually going to play. So oh, yeah, it's crazy because I mean, obviously with COVID pushing everything around, this is kind of a barren year for games, and those, some of those games could really thrive this year. And then they just could. next year, you got you know. This is just Sony, like, and then whatever Microsoft has, plus whatever comes on PC and then Nintendo, like, yeah. wow, next year. You know, if Breath of the Wild 2 is also in the picture next year, which yep. I, I don't know, maybe it will be. It could be. But I feel like Insomniac has put the PS5 on its fucking back. <laughs> yeah, I think they have. Oh. I think that they are coming out as probably, like, the premier dev for PS5 at the moment, um, and probably the most exciting thing for Sony first party. Um, yeah. And that's great. I mean, I think that they are giving games. It's like, yeah, you want to play your really good Marvel games. Well, you're going to do it on Sony platform. Yep. You're, you don't get to play those games anywhere else. <laughs> you can play guardian somewhere else, or you can play uh, Avengers if you want to, yeah, but if you want to. the ones you want to play. <laughs> yeah. They're here on our platform. Yeah. <laughs> um, they this you know this generation man they've got the fucking games Microsoft has the deals but man PS5 has the fucking games yeah I mean it's still gonna come out with being very much like yep these are these are this is why you buy PlayStation products because we own all these studios and we make very high quality games uh, uh, I will say that Uncharted thing it's also coming to PC true right so they that, I mean that's something that Sony's been doing for the past few years where they've been dabbling pushing some of their exclusives to pc like horizon well um, when after after a long tail yeah, right like, like well, we basically half, sold years, it. something like that like even longer it feels like yeah. three or four or five or four three or four yeah and i mean um, uncharted's going to be it's a pretty long gap there but it's like fine we've already sold a bunch of this on the console so here we can make a bunch more money for people wanting to buy it on pc and double dipping to buy it on pc so they can just crank up the visual effects if they have the hardware um so yeah um overall i was pretty pretty happy with the showcase um it just continues to show exactly that that sony has a lot of games from their first party studios that you get on their platform um yeah and right now that still continues to help them sell consoles um and, and push that forward. Yeah, if they could put the consoles in the stores. Yeah. <laughs> it I know. would sell a lot. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> I'm sure they would love to put more consoles in the store. But Yeah. Yep, it's not entirely because of them. Yeah. <laughs> or it's not even really at all because of them. They would love to put more out there. So oh. I feel lucky that you sent me a link one day. <laughs> yeah. Um, how is Final Fantasy fourteen? Hey, that's uh, it's great. I have one more quest left, and I'm done with the the entire story, so far. You side quests and stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's side yeah. quests I could go to and do, but if oh, okay. we talk okay. about the mains, the MSQ main story quest, uh, mm -hmm. as it's abbreviated, um, is uh, I have one left, and then I'm waiting till November for more of that, and now I get to decide. Once I do that, if there's other things I want to be doing in the game, or if I just want to to put it up for now, I don't know yeah. yet. I really don't. Um, Our weekly conundrum. I know, but <laughs> do, it's. Do. I, I love it. It's been a lot of fun. I will say, in this past week, uh, I've teared up multiple times as I finished out Shadowbringer's storyline. Like that's awesome. Like I live for games that like make me feel things and this game makes me feel things a lot um and it's That's no so small cool. part because you spend so much time with these characters and yep. and i will say the the feelings of sadness and stuff it's a lot of tears of more of like happiness and elation because the game still is not cynical at all um even at the end even at the end of this expansion no Quote not at all end. Yeah. it is yeah that's cool still hopeful and positive um which is exactly what I need consistently in my life right now. So, 
Um, right. Yeah, it goes back to the Last of Us 2 argument that I had. I was yeah. like, I don't want to play this. <laughs> I, I tried. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, I think and it still brings me to why Final Fantasy XIV probably is resonating really a lot right now when people are trying it. It's because yeah. Yeah. it is so opposite of our world right now. Um, yep. And it gives... It's a place to just kind of be kind and nice and generally the community is actually kind and nice um actually they're very kind and nice because there was a number of things in this past week where yeah i totally screwed up and wiped the party um as the healer or <laughs> died and no one gave me shit about it like that's cool everyone was just like let's that's get back. let's just go back in we got this like very positive interactions um damn and it's pretty much always been that way i think over 280 hours i've only had a couple negative negatives out of any of the dungeons and stuff i've run with other people um that is pretty cool it is cool i i really appreciate that so yep that that's all i've been playing so awesome with my daughter we've just been bouncing around um, the thing we played recently, she's she's not sticking to anything. Like we were doing Metopia for quite a while, and then she bounced off that. Um, not for any, not because she didn't like it, but just she had other things she wanted to do. Um, but we did Link's Awakening today because it's Baby Link Day. On one day on the weekend, we get to do Baby Link stuff. Um, so she, <laughs> fuck, um, wanted to play take on take on the controller immediately so she's getting better at that she's really good at moving the character around with the stick and putting it where she needs it to go without even looking at the stick um but she's still not quite getting the okay the enemy you're getting close to the enemy swing your sword she just bounces into the enemy and bounces in I'm like swing your sword bounces in the enemy swing your sword bounces in the enemy i'm like okay don't don't make this not fun but i was just like Ugh, swing the sword <laughs> she kept dying and restarting dying and restarting and then she kind of felt like she was bad at it. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> like, you're just practicing. She's like, I'm going to practice with the grass. And she just went and cut all the grass. There we go. And she's 45 minutes just cutting grass. And she's like, tell me a story about how I'm the best uh, lawnmower in Hyrule. <laughs> I'm like, all right, sure. Um, yeah, it was fun. I still am just surprised that Nintendo hasn't fixed the frame rate issue when you leave a house. You come out and it stutters for like five seconds. Yeah, I don't um, know. They never fucking updated that game at all. Nope. Um. Like, it's not done. <laughs> you gotta fix this shit. And they didn't. Um, it's weird. I don't know. Do, do they need to fix it? Do they really? I, I would feel like as an art... You tell me. <laughs> like, if if every time you came out of whatever in Astroneer and it stuttered like that for five seconds, would you fix it? Yes, because we are still making updates to our game. But I guarantee you, when we stop making updates to Astroneer, there will be things in there that are still broken that we're just gonna be like, yep. We're not fixing Have you ever those. put out a game that you didn't update one time? Um, trying to think. I mean, just, I think there were. I mean, PopCap, we never updated like our PC games that much. Updates were huge if we were gonna do it, and it was pretty much only for crash, crash things. We've, yeah, yeah. Um, really egregious. Like, wow! Uh, in this situation, the game's completely unplayable, or it destroys corrupt uh, save files. Um, or it superheats the battery in the phone. <laughs> yeah, it just <laughs> it turns like, into a flaming fireball. Weird stuff, I would say. Uh, I mean, the phone stuff we always updated because we were constant. It's a, a live service game, so we were constantly pushing new stuff to the to it. But the PC stuff was like, no, when the game goes out, that's the game. Like that's yeah. the point. Like, um. So it doesn't surprise me if Nintendo's like, nope, that's the game, um, and this is there, and they're like, well, we've already disbanded the team, so we're we're done. Because <laughs> and there's a good chance it wasn't Nintendo who. Uh, yeah, it might uh, have been who yeah, did the actual house. dev mm -hmm. work on that specifically. Um, hard to say. That stuff. It's that's not. It's not. You know, game breaking. It's not. Yep. It's just mildly irritating. Yep. And not exactly like that Nintendo polish that I'm used to. Yep. You're not wrong. But it looks good. I don't I don't know, but D did you finish that game? No. Hmm. Which is fine. Seems to be a theme. <laughs> Me asking you if you finished the game and you said no. No. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, that's that's all that stands out to me from this week is um, Link's Awakening. So it's been a been a busy week. Yeah, um, I can imagine. And some some nice relaxing. So uh, yeah, so that was it. Wow, a lot of good stuff. Oh, you know what? We didn't mention it. We should mention it briefly. Uh, my headline is. Uh, Epic lost to Apple in every single count except for the one it wanted to win. Yeah. They get <laughs> um, to apparently, both. yeah. The judge says that uh, Apple has to allow third-party um, payment, basically, or whatever, in-app payments. Yep. yep. Um, I guarantee you Apple's going to make that as hard as hell for people, though. Oh, yeah. There's so many things that they could push that to be like, well, you can. See, a developer can do third-party payments, but um, they didn't say that we had to make it easy. So Yeah, exactly. Right, there's one one pixel on the screen that if you can hit that pixel, it will open up third-party payments. Nah, uh, I, could, I could just totally see it on, like, approval side. They just make it hell to get, get your game approved if it has third-party payments and, like... Oh, shit, yeah. Like, just restrictions on, like, well, it has to do all these. These are the, This is the requirements for certification, so your third-party payments have to fall on, like, be certified like this, um, which would make it really hard for people to do. Epic could probably do it because they have the money and the time. But, um, yeah, uh, I'm curious on the non-gameway side how this is going to affect things because this exact reason is why you can't buy books in the Kindle app. On, yeah, right, exactly. Like, you used to be able to, and they cut it. <laughs> Because yep. Apple changed their policies on this, but they could put that back now theoretically. Yep. Um, That'd be nice because it's annoying how I have to leave the app to go to the website yeah. to buy the fucking shit. Yeah. Um, it didn't. That doesn't make me want to buy books in the Apple Store. No. Apple. I, no. I don't. Oh. <laughs> uh, so. so. Yeah, I think that. I think it is uh, a quite a big change that's going to come from this. Yeah, but I still don't think it's going to be uh, seamless or made easy. Right. Yeah, as an Apple stock owner, I watched the stock price on Friday, and it didn't. It went down like two percent or whatever. So I don't know. We'll see where it goes. Yeah. But that's you know, sig- could be lots of lost revenue, but also could not be. Yeah, I don't know how much lost revenue it would be in the end. But Apple won the rest against. Yeah. Um, Epic basically. Like, yes, Epic, you're assholes. You shouldn't have done this. You owe them $17 million or whatever. And yeah. Epic's like, oh, I don't fucking care. We'll make that back in a day yeah, now that we won much. this other thing. Yeah, pretty much. And we should <laughs> show like, you. We, I hate both. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. Uh, no, Epic's like, uh, we can show you our receipts from just Fortnite from yesterday. Like, yeah, exactly. Good. That's pocket change. Um, but yes, the judge was very much was like, you're both idiots. I hate you both. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's, that's the vibe that I got. You all <laughs> suck. Um, a lot. And I hope you all rot in hell. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, so yeah, that's our podcast. Episode yep. 306 of Prof and Dev Play Games. Fuck Apple, fuck Epic. Yep. Um, but got lots of good games for 2022. Um, I guess fuck 2021. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, for games. Um, he is at Summerspeak. I'm at Prof Plays Games, and we will see you next week. Uh, enjoy your week. If you like our podcast, please rate us on your podcast service of choice and uh, tell a friend. We'll see you next week. All right. Later, everyone. See ya.